Hey YouTube, um, my name is Thomas. I've recently been watching a lot of videos online about testimonies of Jesus Christ, dreams, visions, things like that. Just the rapture, like Jesus coming soon. Things that like are really important to Christians, and they really helped me. So I want to make a video telling you guys about things I've experienced and uh, dreams. You know, the Holy Spirit showing me things and. Just a lot of things that I hope will help other people out there that are searching for these kind of answers. And uh, I made a video like this, it was like 20 minutes long about a couple weeks ago, but it never uploaded, so I'm borrowing my girlfriend's laptop. We're going to try it again. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to start off by saying that I used to be really spiritually dead up until about three four years ago like I was really 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 su super spiritually dead like I was just running with the world all the things that I thought were worth a lot like money girls popularity just stuff like that like things basically just worldly things and um, I'm gonna try to keep up with me I'm gonna talk a little bit faster so this video isn't so long as the last one but uh, I'm going to start off by saying my first spiritual time I encountered, like, demonic forces. So I was at my boss's house, and I was smoking with my boss. And after we smoked, it was around the time where I first started smoking, like, weed. And uh, I know a lot of you are going to think immediately, that's, this guy's crazy, he's just a, you know, drug head, whatever. But this is my experience, and it was real. So we were smoking in his garage, he went to bed, and I went and laid in the living room. And I was just, all of a sudden, like, I just felt really, like, I couldn't move. I was just, like, dead on the floor. But, like, my spirit was, like, with me still. I wasn't dead, obviously, but I was hearing voices. But not only was I hearing them, I could feel them. And, like, they're, they didn't really have any power, but I could just feel their presence. And so they started talking to me and telling me to go hurt my boss and his family, you know, go to the kitchen, get a knife. You know, I'm not going to get into that. But they were telling me to do all kinds of things, and I obviously had a choice, and I didn't talk back. But it was telepathically, and I would say, no, like, I'm not going to I'm not gonna hurt anybody. I'm not going to do that. That's wrong. And then they would tell me to do other things, and they were just laughing, like, this horrible laugh the whole time. And I'm just sitting there, like, in a blanket, like, on the floor, like, all creeped out as many of you guys can imagine how creepy that would be and uh, all of a sudden like one of them just came really close to me and I like opened my eyes and like I could just feel this presence right next to me he was telling me to like you know lust he was telling me to like think about things and like lust and uh, like commit sin basically they were just they were blaspheming God too they were talking bad about him they were telling me all kinds of things. Basically, they were attacking my spirit. That's the point of what I'm trying to get to. They were attacking my spirit, and since I was so high, or like my subconscious mind, my spirit was just really t tuned into these voices. And so I was sitting there battling with them, you know, saying like, "Go away, like get out, like just trying to battle with them." But I had absolutely no power, and they knew that. They knew that I was spiritually dead. You know, I was running with this world, and I had no power against them. But there was a point where I just started getting so afraid, and I started thinking about, like, man, these voices aren't going away. Like, I'm feeling so crazy. Like, what am I going to do? And I started thinking, well, why don't you pray to God? And this voice came in, like, no, you can't pray to God. Like, you're a sinner. and Like, you, he doesn't want anything to do with you. Stuff like that. But I ignored that voice, and I started praying. And instantly, as soon as I said, like, Dear Heavenly Father, you know, like Jesus Christ, words like that, they were gone. Like these voices in my head were completely silent. They were gone. I couldn't feel their presence. The only presence I felt was like a peace kind of thing. Like as I was talking to God, they had to flee. And so that was my first spiritual experience. Like that's the first time I cast out demons, I guess you could say. 
And you think that I would have turned super Christian after that experience, but the next morning, you know, I went on with my life. I thought it was just a dream or something. I just wanted to put my head back in the sand. And so, you know, I just would just brush it off. But it seemed every time I would smoke, I was just smoking because people thought it was cool. Like, you know, like I thought, like, whatever, everyone smokes. It's not even a big deal. But every time I would smoke, I'd be super spiritually, like, really atone like I could just hear everything spiritually you know I can I can feel the presences in the room so just to give you more examples um, these things didn't always just happen when I was smoking sometimes I'd just be dreaming or like sometimes I'd be not even smoking and I could feel presences like I could say that that's my spiritual gift but I'm really spiritual and like sensitive to good and bad spirits in a room or you know stuff like that so uh, I'll just keep going with experiences uh, the next time I felt that we were all smoking and we went in the living room again this time we're all watching TV and I'll, I was just like I couldn't move there was this like presence holding me down and I couldn't move or talk or like anything I was just sitting there looking at the TV and just so you all know, people that think like, wow, there's like a lot of subliminal stuff happening on TV that your eye doesn't catch is, there actually is. Like when I was in my subconscious or in my spirit back here in that part of your mind, I could see like really quick like McDonald's flashes, like just anything, like all kinds of advertising, super quick on the TV. It was so fast that I felt like I was going to have a seizure. Like every time a flash would hit, my head would hurt. Like. It was like it was it was so painful. I know a lot of you guys believe that there's a lot of subliminal stuff in TV and movies, and there is like I don't know how to explain it, but I saw I saw it happen. Like all the quick flashes, quick frames of advertising, you know, words, whatever they want to put on. So that was another time. Um, And there's one, I won't give you all of them, but I'll just give you, like, the strongest time that I knew that, like, there was a serious, like, spiritual thing going on in my life. It was um, one time we were smoking, and then my boss and my brother, I don't know if I should say that, but my brother, we were all in a car driving to get his check. And right after we smoked, and instantly, like, I was in my spirit again. Like, my body couldn't move, but, like, my spirit was, like, more alive than I've ever felt. And, uh, my boss, like, turned on, like, this rap song on the radio, like, Tech 9 or something. And I knew the song, but, like, when I was high, it sounded different. It was, like, a different song when I was high. It was like a ritual, and it was going like six, 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 six. It was like a background guy that just kept saying that. And then there was like this spiritual, like, he was like saying all these things that were causing the sky and like all, everything around me to just like dance in this ritual. And it was like super demonic. Like instantly my spirit knew that like there was, it was really evil and bad and that I was like under attack basically and so this spirit like was in the sky and it was like shaping this like the clouds into like a genie and like the clouds were all dancing like and I was wide awake just looking out my window in the car and like this this being basically the devil I'll say a lot of you guys that our Christian will believe in the devil and now I know that it was the devil he was trying to buy my soul and he was telling me like you know if I just sell my soul to him he'll give me anything I want in the song and in the clouds it was like a perfect mix the song was telling me like give it up like this is your one chance to like give out your soul get anything and then the clouds the same thing was happening it's like it's like lantern, it's like lamp, it's like genie lamp was like telling me, what do you want? Like anything you want, like three wishes. 
like in words the the smoke that came out of the lamp in the sky like I know this sounds really crazy but later on in this video I'll explain how this all like mixes in with how things are right now so I was basically saying three wishes like anything you want and I was like trying to turn my head away like no I don't I don't like I know what's happening I don't I'm not gonna give up my soul like I don't want to do this and uh, the last thing I remember was just blacking out like after I said like no I don't want it I just remember blacking out I just like fell asleep I woke up and I was just like okay like I'm done smoking like this this is too scary everyone around me is just high and like eating and they're getting fatter and everyone's fine like nobody cares but me when I would smoke I would hear de like demons and like the devil was trying to buy my soul and I was super spiritually sensitive to all of that so I just quit smoking I was just I was done with that it was just too crazy but the one thing that stuck with me is I started telling like family members about my dream like about my experiences and I remember the demon told me if I ever told anyone that I would talked to them and about my life about like any of this they would target me forever like my whole life and just to prove to you guys I mean I know you can't trust me but I've always been having nightmare dreams like ever since those days I've been always having spiritual attacks like every night like I could give you examples in other videos if you guys see this one and want to know more I can go in depth in times where I wake up and like someone next to me is like possessed and like I cast out the devil and all of a sudden they just like fall like just crazy stuff like that hopefully I can convince you guys that there is a spiritual warfare going on like even though you don't feel it like your your souls under attack especially in this day and age with all like the all the crazy people that are out there that are worshiping the devil so the next thing I want to say is that I still even after that time that the devil tried to buy me off I still didn't run with the Lord I still turned away from him I just thought okay I'm done smoking like I'm just done with that but uh I still wasn't Christian or nothing I didn't care to turn back to God or nothing and I still lived in my sin and I was still partying having sex drinking just like just making a fool out of myself basically and so one day the Lord had enough of that and I was driving with my friend and I went to his house on the weekend and we were deciding to have a party at his house or like have people over and so we went out and bought a bunch of beer and alcohol and stuff and this is when Jesus turned my turned my life around this day so we went out and bought all this beer and alcohol and then my friend was like let's go pick up our let's go pick up these people and on the way why don't we just drink a little bit like let's take a few beers to make it fun it was like a 45 minute drive to an hour so we're like yeah let's take a little bit of beer and stuff so we did and my friend filled up a Gatorade bottle full of vodka and like we had a bunch of beer and stuff and I hadn't eaten anything that whole day but some Pringles I just don't know why I hadn't really eaten I didn't have an appetite I just I don't even think I had that much money back then maybe I couldn't eat because I didn't have money but basically I didn't eat anything and I started drinking in the car and I'm a super lightweight so I had like two beers and I and like some I was like I just remember drinking that vodka and instantly just being blacked out and um, so I was like blacked out and the next thing I remember was um, the next thing I remember sorry about that the next thing I remember was driving and like coming back to consciousness and like looking at my friend and him just like laughing and like everyone in the back seat was just screaming and I was just like they said that I was playing chicken, like I was going into the oncoming and then swerving back the last minute when a car would come. Basically just really risking everyone's life, like I was totally dead inside, like, uh, that's just to the extent I'm trying to tell you guys how dead I was spiritually, like, 
I was I was just lost. I was risking their lives just to have a good night, you know. And um, so the next thing I remember was I was in a gas station and these cops pulled me over. Thank goodness they did. And uh, I was blacked out and I came to and I was like, "What's going on?" And they got me out and I failed all the sobriety tests. And they put me in the cop car, and I looked at my car in front of me, and all of a sudden, all these people were coming out of the back seat. And I was like, whoa, like, when did I pick up any of them? Like, what the heck? I don't remember picking any of them up. That's how blacked out I was, people. Like, just hear my heart. Like, I was gone. Like, so blacked out. But the spirit protected me. The spirit knew my duty, my job, that I was going to change. So he protected me to get out of there. So then I went to jail and stuff, and like, my girlfriend was all worried about me, and like, all my friends were just turned away from me, you know, I was kind of outcasted after that, like, what an idiot, you know, stuff like that, but I'll get back to the story, um, so I was in jail, and I woke up, and that's when I was, came really, I was really sober, and I was like, what happened last night? Like, did I kill anybody? I was in this holding cell all by myself. I was like, man, I probably killed somebody. I was just like, oh no, like, the devil, like, got me. Like, he tricked me. Like, I've been living this life and it caught up to me now and I'm going to spend the rest of my life in prison. And I didn't know if I killed anybody, like, taking my black out. And uh, I started praying. You know, a voice came to me and it was like, Thomas, pray to God. And I was like, no, I did this to myself. Like, he doesn't want to know. He doesn't love me. Like, I'm, I'm just a wretch. I ruined my life. He don't care. But, like, the soft voice was just like, pray to God. Like, just do it. So I started praying to God. I was like, God, like, forgive me. Like, here I am. Like, I made a mess of my life. Who knows if I'm going to be in jail the rest of my life or in prison. I started calling out to him and I called out to Jesus. And that was the first time in my life that I felt like this warm, like out of this world, like this warm oil just being poured down from my head all the way down to my toes. And he told me, like, it's okay, like, I have, I have a job for you to do. Like, I, I forgive you, like, I protected you. And I felt like more at peace. I was like, Maybe I, okay, maybe I didn't hurt anybody and the Holy Spirit protected me, you know? And so, I figured out, I went to the, I went to the real jail, they booked me, they booked me in, and I went to the real jail. Sorry guys, I know I'm babbling a lot, but I'm just, I'm, I'm really just trying to speak my heart and what happened, how Jesus changed my life. So just bear with me, and I hope you guys get something out of this video, because there's a lot. I gotta tell, I'm trying to make it as short as possible. Um, so, I was in jail, and they booked me in with this guy, this random guy, I didn't know him or nothing, and I was like, alright, you know, I was more at peace because I felt Jesus' love for the first time, and it was real, I know I'm just kind of downplaying it, but it was the greatest thing I ever felt in my life, really, it was, like, I instantly, I just felt so much better, like, I knew that once I got out of jail, I was going to be a different man. So they put me in with this guy in jail, and we just, me and him started talking, you know, in the cell. He's like, what are you in for, and stuff, and I told him. And he told me that the Lord had been working in his life, too, but he was too late. Like, now he was going to go, he was going to gonna be booked for life, basically. He did a lot of crime, and I was lucky that I only needed to be in there for the weekend. He was going to be in there, he was going to go to prison after that for a lot of years, and, uh, we started talking and then all of a sudden we started getting on to like talk about Jesus and stuff. And he's like, Thomas, when I first saw you come in the jailhouse, I was like, man, they better not put that new guy with me. Like, I've been enjoying my alone time speaking with the Lord and stuff. He's like, Thomas, now I realize why you're in here. Like, this is what God wants you to see that if you keep living your life, you're going to end up where I am right now. Like, you need to turn your life around right now. Like, he was telling me about how he regret the way he lived. Now he can't go home to his family and stuff. And um, the whole time I was in there, God was just softening my heart. Before I was this mean person. All I cared about was selfish, was myself. All I cared about was myself. 
I treat my family like crap. I treat my girlfriend like crap. I was just out for me. And while I was in there, the spirit was like softening me, and like, you know, I was just my heart was just being softened. I started to see clearly the truth was coming into my life, and all the lies were like being broken, you know. And so the next day, or like the next following Sunday, because it was a weekend. I woke up and I was like, I was in jail still, and I was like, you know what, whatever, like, no one's answering the phone, I'm just going to go back to bed, like, I'm just going to go back to bed, I'm here forever, you know, I'm going to be here all weekend, and this sucks, so I laid my head back down, and all of a sudden, like, I had this, like, vi like there was this, I was, I was sleeping, and all of a sudden in my dream, there was this man robe, so white, and, like, pure, like, he was in my cell, and he was looking right at me and he said, Thomas, get up. If you don't get up right now, you're never going to find God. And I, like, I woke up immediately and I was like, whoa, what the heck was that? And I knew immediately, I'm like, get up. So I got up. And I was like, I guess I'll get up. So I went out and I tried to call my girlfriend, I think. And it was Father's Day, so she didn't answer. Obviously, she was with her dad. She's not going to answer her deadbeat boyfriend in jail, you know? <laughs> so, um, so as I was making that phone call, all of a sudden the police guard was like, anybody want to go to church? Like, come meet at the front door. And I was like, yeah, I guess I'll go to church, you know, whatever. But he only said it out loud with his voice. Keep that in mind tell you about it later so I went to jail and the pre I went to church I mean and the preacher was talking about like the prodigal son you know like how how uh, the prodigal son they talking about how Jesus left the 99 sheep to get the one that was lost I'm sure all you guys know those scriptures and that's when it hit my heart I was like wow like this this isn't like an accident like me being saved in the car blacked out not dying and killing my friends going to jail forever me like being protected that whole night, going to jail, going in this cell with this Christian guy that's talking about Jesus to me, um, waking up from that vision of that angel telling me to get up and seek God, and then I went and made that phone call, and it just so happened that guy was saying like, "Hey, let's go. To, anybody want to go to church?" And then they're talking about the prodigal son, Jesus going after the one and leaving the ninety-nine. And I was like, wow, that's like my life. Like, I turned away from God when I was a kid. And I went and lived my life the way I wanted to live it. And now Jesus is coming back to get me because I was lost. Like, if that makes any sense to you guys, like, I hope it does. But basically, Jesus was coming back in my life. He had a purpose for me. And I'll get into that next. But bottom line is, so I went to jail. I went to church. And um, I learned that, and like my heart was just my my cold hard heart was just shattered after that. I was like, wow, I can't turn away from God anymore. Like, look at look at all this has He done for me. Like, it was just amazing. Like, I, my eyes were open. Like, I was just I just felt great. So then I went back to my cell, and I I woke up my cell. No, I my cellmate woke up. And he's like, where were you? I'm like, I was at church. It's like what? What do you mean? Usually they announce it over the speaker. You know? Like, he's like, I go to church every Sunday. Like, usually they announce it over the speaker so I can go with. And I was like, yeah, the guy only announced it through his, he just yelled it out. Like, anybody want to go to church? And I just happened to be awake to go. You see that? Like, if I would have stayed asleep, and that holy angel wouldn't have came to me to wake up, I would have been sleeping just like my cellmate. But that angel came and told me to wake up. And then I went downstairs, and it just so happened that guy announced it over his voice, yelling it out. And that's like, if I would have like, if I wouldn't have gotten up like that spirit told me, I wouldn't have learned that lesson of the prodigal son. I wouldn't have learned about that lesson of Jesus leaving the ninety-nine to get that one sinner, because the angels in heaven rejoice more over one sinner that comes back to God than they do rejoice over 99 people that have had God their whole life. So, like, that's when it really hit me. I was like, this, there's too many coincidences here. Like, 
blacked out driving behind the wheel. You know, this angel coming to me. This angel working in this cellmate's life that he can teach me about Jesus. You know, he was in jail for like three weeks before me. And he was having the experiences I was having. And God used him to like soften my heart and to think and to know the truth. So that's, that's how God changed my life. So here's this timeline that I want you to see. I was dead spiritually. The devil came to me and he said, Thomas, sell your soul. I'll give you whatever you want through that ritual in the car and just looking up and looking at the devil trying to buy me out. But God had a different plan. And the devil knew that back then. And that's why he was trying to buy me out back then when I was dead. But God, through his love, mercy, and compassion, turned my life and he gave me that experience I had in that one weekend that changed my life. I didn't die in a crash. I didn't kill my friends and spend eternity like in jail and then going to hell. You know what I mean? Like, that would have been horrible, but God protected me. So now I want you guys to know that I've been sharing that with like family, a few friends, my girlfriend. And I've been under spiritual attack, like, almost every night. Like, they, these demons come in my room, and they try to scare me and shut me up. I know that sounds crazy to the normal person that doesn't believe in these things, but to anybody, to do those that have eyes to see and those that have ears to hear, let them hear. So hear, my, hear what I'm saying and know that it's real and that I'm a brother in Christ and I'm having these experiences that I hope that you guys can benefit from them. I'm not trying to glorify myself at all. I'm, I, if it were for me, I wouldn't be making this video. Uh, if it were for me, I'd be sleeping right now, like just doing my own thing, but the Spirit's been telling me to make a video and get this word out. Um, so I hope you spend the time to watch this video, and then I still have a little bit more to go. So, um, I'll get into my dreams now because I'm more you know I quit living in sin I'm not perfect but I'm turning to God and I'm asking for help and stuff you know from that transition that I got my my DUI that changed my life <clears throat> about three years ago now almost and I've been under attack by a lot of spirits that are trying to shut me up and uh not not speak these things out but now I'm going to start telling you about the revelations that God has been giving me in these dreams that I've been having so just only a few months ago maybe a year I had a dream that I was in hell and I'm going to give you the revelation that God gave me of what that place is like maybe it could strike a little bit of fear in you guys like it did me just so you guys know, I don't have dreams about, like, live, you know, driving around in a clown car, falling off a cliff. Like, they're not these kind of dreams. They're real dreams that I'm, like, in. I experience pain. I experience, like, sadness, joy. Ex all these emotions that are magnified times a million in these dreams. So I'm going to tell you about my experience in hell. So, um, I was sleeping one night, and all of a sudden, I, like, I just like woke somewhere else and where I woke up was in hell and I was walking down this path to like this giant wooden door and there was like all this blackness around me and here's the door over here and all this blackness is all around me like it's so alive that like it, you can like feel it grab you this dark heavy like toxic air like it's just it's I, I, there's no words to describe the fear that goes through you that was going through me so I'm walking and I feel this person this thing hovering over me way I couldn't see him it was so dark but I felt him and I could hear him and I was asking him I was like where am I and all of a sudden this creepy voice no no, no actually he didn't say that first I started asking him, like God I was walking to this gate I was like God I'm sorry God, I know, I'm, uh, I know I'm messed up, like, forgive me, I'm sorry. I was so weak and, like, just, like, depressed. 
and this music that was going on in hell was so depressing too and it was all this attacking me and as I was getting closer to the door I, I noticed that there was like scratches on it like people that have like been scratching at it like trying not to fall in this pit this door had like all these demonic symbols on it it was like wooden and old ancient like horrible looking and right before I f the doors opened on me, I, I looked up and I said, where am I? And this horrifying voice was like, in hell! Like, I know that sounds cheesy, me saying it, but just imagine, like, this, like, the creepiest voice, this, like, demonic voice, with, like, a dark, heavy, deep voice, and at the same time, a high pitch, scary, horrible voice that pierces you. It's like horrible and I was like in hell like I just started falling down this pit like just falling down all the way to the bottom and right before I hit the bottom this this angel came and like snatched me out it grabbed me and like snatched me out of there and I was I woke up and it felt like I had just come to my body my heart hurt my nose my whole body was cold as if, as if it was dead like my whole body was cold and aching and I was like I woke up I was like Skylar like that's my girlfriend I was like I just oh my gosh I was just in hell like Skylar like pray for me and I was just like I was so afraid immediately I got on my knees and I was like God like I'm sorry like help me help me I don't want to go there ever again and like I've had a lot of dreams in being this place like if you guys again if you guys want to know more I have this like treasure chest in me of like everything you want to know about me like all my experiences I've had dreams about being in hell I've had dreams about the United States being nuclear attacked like bombs going off everywhere and like my family like looking at my mom and like seeing her face in horror and like all my siblings wondering like what's gonna happen you know and like I've had dreams about you can look at uh, this other video of a kid on YouTube that had the exact same dream as me and in the dream I was on a beach and the Holy Spirit was with, with me I could you know I could feel him like he was showing me a vision and like they went from like these small little waves you know we're just at the beach everyone's having fun and all of a sudden there's like this Eiffel Tower size of like water just like coming at like everyone and like the spirit was telling me like this is destruction that's coming like this is what's coming like brace yourself a tide is gonna come and squash all of you and I'm not saying that a giant tsunami is gonna come like maybe I don't know but I'm saying like spiritually like or like maybe even destructive wise something's coming like people need to know that like you look at the Grammys you look at the Super Bowl halftime show and there's like all these demonic rituals going on I know that sounds crazy because everyone just thinks, oh, they're just dancing, whatever. But look at the Grammys. Like, there's, like, really devilish stuff going on. And they know that it actually is weakening society and weakening the culture, weakening people. And yeah, they know that they're preparing us for a great destruction. Like, the wrath of God is going to happen soon. And a lot of people have been having dreams about Jesus coming soon and the rapture and all this stuff. I haven't really had dreams like that. I've had mostly dreams of just a destruction. I, obviously, I've had dreams of like an earthquake coming and splitting and all these people like falling into it. I've had waves coming to crush a bunch of people. I've had a tornado dream, like me and my family and like other people running in the woods. And all of a sudden, there's this, this ginormous tornado that's even bigger than any tornado that's hit Earth. It's so massive. And, like, the spirit told me, like, everyone grab onto this tree. Like, hold on. Like, this, this damage is coming. Like, be prepared. You know, I've had dreams of being out in the middle of an ocean on, like, this floating mechanism. I don't even know what it was, but I was just floating in the middle of the ocean. And I looked to, like, the horizon, and there was just this crazy storm coming, like, lightning, like, crazy wind, like, 
just this ginormous storm coming to the shore that's going to destroy everybody. And in my dream, the spirit was telling me again, like, these aren't just nightmares. The spirit actually tells me, like, a storm is coming. Prepare my people. Prepare people. Prepare yourself. Like, for the day that you die, so you could be prepared and go to heaven and not hell. You know, and uh, that's my experience. There's been a lot more things that have happened. I could get into a lot more detail on anything that I've shared. I'm just giving you a quick rough draft. If you want to know, like, exact details of everything, I can give you guys details. But I just want to see if this even helps people, you know. Because I know I watch a lot of YouTube videos, and I'm like, wow, that relates to me. Like, that relates to what I'm going through. And that could help me, too, you know. And I want to help other people. I want people to see this and be like, wow, that really makes me feel better about myself and what I'm going through and stuff, you know. So let me just think about something I could say to close this video. Um, basically, the point of my whole testimony is that there is no way to eternal life. There's no way to a better life unless you use Jesus Christ to come. In, let Him come into your heart, change your life, because there is heaven and hell, and it's worth it to be good in this life so you can go spend eternity with God instead of that horrible place that I was at. Like it just so beyond words how uh, how torturous it is and I have at least 20 dreams I could tell you guys about right now about details of that place like I'm serious like what it looks like all the people that are getting tormented the worms the constant like not being able to breathe like it's like toxic air you can't breathe and like I have dreams where I'm getting stabbed by like this demon constantly and I'm just like die already like I'm just like looking up to the sky like die like I want to die like why do I keep feeling this pain this demon just laughing at me and then all of a sudden it occurs to me like I don't have to be here like I know Jesus and so I'll say Jesus and all of a sudden this light out of the sky comes out and it's so bright and it looks to the left, to the right, and it just all of a sudden lands on me, and then suddenly I'm like back awake in my body. And I wake up from this vision, a dream, whatever you want to call it. And you can look at other videos online of other people saying the exact same thing. Them being in this hellish place. People have died, been in this hellish place. And then as soon as they say G, like as soon as they even say the G part, like as soon as I even say the G, like right before I even say Jesus, he knows that I believe in him. So he's as quick as lightning to come and save me. Like, you, you see what I'm saying? So I hope this video wakes up a few people to realities. Um, I hope, I, again, I only made this video because of the Holy Spirit telling me to, you know, encourage other people and get out of the spell that the enemy has them in and realize that we're in a spiritual battle and not to waste our lives seeking riches on this earth but to help other people to see the truth and be free like me like how I was spiritually dead and Jesus came into my life and now like my life is better than ever like I have everything I could ever want I have a good relationships with people I got a great job a lot of money um, like I spiritually am alive, I have a relationship with Jesus, I have a great family life, good relationship with my girlfriend, myself, like I'm actually living life now, I'm not living in death, in a spiritual death, I know that there's a lot of people that are still there, and I'm just so thankful to God that I'm not, really, I know it doesn't, I don't, I can't express it in my face, but like in my heart, like I'm, really thankful and again share this video with anybody you think might need help um i only made this because the spirit told me to no glory to me all glory to god um leave comments if you want to know more my email address is t-h-a-f-e-n the number 11 
at gmail.com. Uh, leave me an email if you want to know more. If, and I want to know more about you. So if you've been having dreams like this, if you've been having the Holy Spirit come to you and show you things, like I want to know about your experience. Like Just like my DUI, how God took something bad and turned my life good. I want to know how your life turned around, like how Jesus came alive in your life, what you were and who you are now. Like that's a testimony, you know? So let's see, anything else? I guess I, I said it all. I'll just close with a prayer and I hope you'll uh, take this video seriously. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray over this video that you'll use it for your good, that other people can watch it and draw close to you as um, I feel like we're in the end times where your son Jesus is going to come down and we need to be ready at all times because he's going to come at an hour that we don't expect. And I hope that the Spirit guided me to you to say what I needed to say, to reach out to other people that have similar experiences, people that are dead, that need to come back to life spiritually. I hope this video gets out to at least one person that just that helps. That'll be good enough. That'll be worth my 40 minutes sitting at my desk looking at a computer talking. Um, and... I pray for all the people out there that are watching it, that the Holy Spirit will come alive in their life, and they won't be afraid of this world, but reject sin and turn to you, and we'll all be prepared for that day that's coming soon. And I say these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Amen. God bless, people.